Oh, hey. What are you drawing? It's beautiful. So if you couldn't tell from whatever that was, I recently broke my wrist in a snowboarding accident. And since I broke my wrist, I can't type for longer than about 20 seconds without getting a shooting pain down my entire arm. And that means that I can't code, and as a developer, not being able to code is extremely frustrating. So I needed to find a solution for how I could get back to work. Uh, there are a lot of different solutions for an issue like this, but the one I want to explore today uses the new feature of iPadOS 14 called Scribble, which allows you to take a normal Apple Pencil and handwrite into any text box in all of iPadOS and have it converted into digital text. So with this tool, it's really easy to write pretty much anywhere in the OS, so I wanted to see if I could extend this to code and fix my workflow like that. I already really enjoy handwriting with fountain pens, so it shouldn't be that bad of a transition, right? Uh, well, there are some issues that we have to discuss. So we know that we can write normal text, but now we get into the issue of writing code, which is not really the same as English in most languages. So I use VS Code for pretty much everything, and that obviously only runs on a computer and not on an iPad. So we need to find a way around that. And the first thing that came to my mind is Sidecar. So Sidecar is another iPad OS feature. And what it allows you to do is connect to your Mac and then use your iPad as a second display for your computer. So by using this, I went ahead and did that. I popped VS Code onto the window that was now on my iPad. And lo and behold, it does not work. When you are in Sidecar mode, you can't use a feature like Scribble uh, because I can't imagine how much of a nightmare that would be to actually develop in. So when you do that, your Apple Pencil only works as a cursor, and that's obviously not going to work for us. So I needed to think of another way that we could get VS Code onto my iPad. And luckily, I remembered about an open source project I'd read about a while back called Code Server. So what Code Server allows you to do is actually host VS Code as a web server on any machine you'd like, and then access it from a web browser on any other device. So by just booting up Code Server on my laptop, I had a web server host Hosted, uh, just doing it on my laptop temporarily, but I would remove I would move this to an actual server as a remote development environment if this is something that I end up going with. And I can just navigate to that exact VS Code instance on my iPad and we have access to VS Code. So now that we have our tools all set up, we can go ahead and give it a try. Uh, but as you can see here, this was not a fun experience. Uh, I was able to write code here, but the shortcomings of the Scribble feature meant that I wasn't just using my Apple Pencil, but I was actually also using the keyboard for my iPad uh, because I couldn't add spaces, I couldn't delete things, I couldn't actually advance to a new line, and typing symbols was an absolute nightmare, although I did manage to do that with the Apple Pencil eventually. So in the end, writing this terrible BOGO sort algorithm took me about eight minutes, uh, which were excruciating, let me tell you, and it was just overall not a good development experience and not even purely using the Apple Pencil. So uh, we needed another solution. My theory here is that Scribble is simply too good at what it does and not good at what it doesn't do. And what it does is take your handwriting and interpret it into English. So English uses a structure of words and symbols only very rarely. Uh, so it is not expecting to have constant parentheses and curly braces and colons and things like that, or to have words that are not standard English. So this led to a lot of issues and was overall what contributed to its downfall. So I thought maybe if I use a simpler handwriting recognition tool that is not going to try to inference what I'm writing as much, then we might have more luck. So enter Selby Penscript. So Selby Penscript is an obscure old, seemingly abandoned app that adds a third party keyboard onto your iPad, which allows you to handwrite into it and then it will convert that into text. But its killer features for me is it has a space bar, you can turn off auto spacing, it has a backspace key, and you can use its suggestions to use alternative spellings instead of in Scribble where you just have to delete something and then try writing it again. So a quick disclaimer before I get into actually using this tool, this tool is made by some random Chinese development house uh, and it seems to communicate with the internet for some reason. 
So I don't know for sure that it's sending all of your data to some remote server to be used by the Chinese government, but I also don't know for sure that that's not the case. So I wouldn't recommend using this for anything that's sensitive or private or anything like that because I have absolutely no clue what it's doing. And overall, I would not really recommend installing this app at all if you could avoid it, but I just did it here for this little experiment. Uh, but now that we have it installed and we understand the risks, let's get into actually trying to code with it. And as you can see here, this was a much, much cleaner experience. Uh, with access to a spacebar and a backspace key, and with better symbol recognition generally, uh, I was able to code pretty much twice as fast, making this terrible search algorithm to match our terrible sort algorithm. Uh, still, it took me about four minutes, which is probably about eight times longer than it needed to uh, if I was typing, but it's a market improvement and I'm sure that with practice it would get even better. Uh, but this is where I'm going to leave this experiment. Can you code with an Apple Pencil? Yes. Is it a good experience? Definitely not. It is not a thing that you can actually use for productivity, uh, and it is more just a curious little challenge that you can try on your own to see just how frustrating it is. Um, but with more practice, as I said before, I'm sure I could get better, but it just doesn't seem worth it almost at all. So now I want to take some time to talk about the actual solutions to a problem like this. So for a long time, the main solution to something like this was to buy special made ergonomic peripherals, uh, something like the Mateus one-handed keyboard, which is a $600 peripheral that lets you type every letter you would on a normal keyboard, but just with one hand. Uh, or more recently, you could build very much the same thing with maybe like the left half of an Ergodox keyboard and just do everything else through QMK. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a mechanical keyboard thing, which is something I'm going to be talking about, about on this channel a little bit more. Uh, and maybe using something like foot pedals or other weird input devices uh, for developers who have like debilitating carpal tunnel syndrome or other disabilities that prevent them from being able to type on a keyboard. Uh, but recently there have been some really, really cool apps that allow you to do incredibly powerful things with things like your voice and with eye tracking. So the one that I want to talk about today is called Talon Voice. So what Talon Voice is, is it is an open source program that has a bunch of plugins for it that you can use to essentially program it to be able to take any action from moving your mouse and window management to actual coding and typing. Uh, and it allows you to control everything with your voice and with eye tracking. Uh, the eye tracking is obviously optional. I don't have an eye tracking sensor, so I haven't tried that part out, but its voice engine is incredibly powerful. And even just from messing around with it over a few hours uh, over the last few days, I have gotten way faster than I was with this Apple Pencil. Again, not a very high mark to beat, but still incredibly impressive for learning an entirely new paradigm. And it is just overall a really cool tool. If you wanna see me sort of dive into Talon more, learn it fully and show you guys what that experience is like, uh, be sure to let me know. I have a lot of time to figure things out, so I would be willing to take on that project. Uh, and that is pretty much going to be it for me for today. Be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it and get subscribed so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.